Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Atta Jagama Jagama Bhagavan Bharata Sahatam Buruhu. Prabhutaya Bhubhajaha. Tanujau Vyarchayam Munim. While Sanjay was thus speaking, Sri Nara, the powerful devotee of the Lord, appeared on the scene carrying his Kumburu. Maharaj Yudhisthira and his brothers received him properly by getting up from their seats and offering obeisance in purport. Rivarsi Nara described herein as Bhagavan due to his being the most confidential devotee of the Lord. The Lord and his confidential devotees are treated on the same level by those who are actually engaged in the loving service of the Lord. And such confidential devotees of the Lord are very much dear to the Lord because they travel everywhere to preach the glories of the Lord in different capacities and try their utmost to convert the non-devotees of the Lord into devotees in order to bring them to the platform of sanity. Actually, a living being cannot he will not devote to the Lord because of his constitutional position. For one becomes a non devotee a non-believer is understood that the person concerned is not in sound condition of life. The, constant, the confidential devotees of the Lord treat such illusion living beings and therefore they are most pleasing to the eyes of the Lord. The Lord says in Gita that no one is dearer to him than one who actually preaches the glories of the Lord to convert the non-believers and non-devotees. Such personality as Narada must be offered all due respects like those offered the personality of God in himself. And Maharaj Judas there, along with his noble brothers, were examples for others in receiving a pure devotee like Narada, who had no other business save and except singing the glories of the Lord along with his vena, a musical stringed instrument. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Paskyatya Dings Tarne Panchikalpa to Bischa Kripa Sindhu Pei Bacha Patita Ram Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nikaranda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari. So this Krishna consciousness movement has been authorized and initiated by the Supreme Lord Himself. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has inaugurated this movement in order to show compassion to the fallen souls around the world. Therefore, his movement is a movement of bringing everyone to the platform of the, the constitutional position is becoming a devotee of the Lord, not only in name, but in actual activity. And so there is a select group of people who come forward to assist the Lord in his mission. And that is those who take a risk to uh, Preach to the conditioned souls, bringing them closer and to the platform of bhakti, which is the, the nature of the living entity. To serve the Lord is natural, as Prabhupada says here. It is understood that persons who are non devotees or non believers, they are not in a sound condition of life. He uses mild words here, in other places, he uses more stronger words terminologies in order to show that these things people have no idea what the pur what is the purpose of life and they're actually acting against their own best interests. 
devotional service is natural because the living entity is by part is part and parcel of the Lord and is particularly existing in order to serve the Lord in loving devotional service. <coughs> so those who who make the attempt to bring others to that platform and says that here they are very dear to the Lord because the Lord came to do this work himself. There's a very interesting and very powerful verse in the uh, in the uh, eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Maybe you can turn to that verse. That's eighth canto, seventh chapter. Yeah, seventh chapter, I think it's verse 44. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, it is said that great tapyate loka tapena sarava prayaso jana parmarada nam tadi purusha syaki latmanaha. It is said that great person is always almost always accept voluntary suffering because of the suffering of people in general. This is considered the highest method of worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is present in everyone's heart. So for the great souls, those who accept suffering on behalf of the Lord in order to bring others, for them it's not suffering. It's, the, it's their way of showing their love to the Lord. And it's their it's their offering of bhakti. But the problem is the conditioned souls don't want the medicine. It's like a person who is asleep and you try to wake them up. Um, they may even hear you trying to wake them up, but they pretend to be asleep just to let you know they don't want to wake up for whatever reason. So the, the conditioned souls, are, especially in Kali Yuga, are very difficult to bring them to Krishna consciousness. That's why it's safe to take. It takes about 300 gallons of blood to make one devotee. And that is uh, mentioned both in Shastras and by the Acharyas. That it takes time, effort, energy, and a lot of hard work, you might call it work in a very loose term, a lot of, a lot of effort to bring one to Krishna consciousness. Those people don't want it. And, uh, and, but those who do, and those who are successful or exemplary, but anyone who tries also mm -hmm. receives the special mercy of the Lord. That means to say that even if you're not successful in bringing people to Krishna conscious, if you make an effort to do it, that is very pleasing to the Lord because that's why the Lord personally comes is to raise the conditioned souls back towards him in devotion. And anyone who is doing the same work as the Lord, of course, not of the same caliber, but the same work, becomes very much recognized by the Lord. And even if one is not successful, but still voluntarily tries without their effort, they become very dear to the Lord. That's why Krishna says in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, one who preaches this message to the devotee is very dear to me. No one will become more, and no one is more dear also. In the following verse, he emphasizes it again. So, uh, therefore, in in the general principle, the general principle is that as we uh, as we make progress in our practice of devotional service, we become more fixed in service, and we also develop more and more transcendental knowledge. And based on that, one wants to uh, automatically give this knowledge to others. And that is called teaching, preaching, outreach. There's various terminologies that are applied 
for showing compassion to the fallen conditions. And uh, therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, there's two kinds of devotees in our movement, those who are concerned only for their own spiritual advancement and those who work for the, the advancement of others. He said, this is the second one, is actually understanding the process of devotional service with him. Uh, Lord Chaitanya is really our Sambandha Acharya. He is our Abhideya Acharya. Of course, he put Rupa Goswami in place that is his representative, teaching the process of bhakti through, this, through the process of Harinam Sankirtan. And by his own example, where he traveled, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Jagannath Puri and traveled for 18, I'm sorry, six years, for six years, all the way down the, um, the uh, eastern coast of India, down to Cape Cormoran. And he was also going inland and preaching and coming back out. And then when he, he reached Cape Cormoran, he came back up on the western side. And when he got to Mumbai, crossed over and went back to Jagannath Puri. It took him six years. And you can read about that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, all the temples he visited and all the places he went. And they spread the Harinam Sankirtan movement. So oh, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He doesn't have to preach because he, he is the object of what everyone's preaching anyway. But, but in the role of his own pure devotee, he's, done, he's doing that just not only for his own transcendental pleasure, but to teach that this is the way to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead to make some sacrifice. So sometimes people think, well, I have to be qualified. Well, there is a certain level of qualification that is required in order to preach, especially in certain areas of the world. But anyone can speak Krishna consciousness. When Lord Chaitanya was at, uh, at Korma Shetra, he stopped in the house of one Brahmana, known as the Korma Brahmana. And he stayed there for four days. And after being nicely served by the Korma Brahmana. The Lord took so much time to give them his association. And they, they developed a real attachment for the Lord. But at that one point, it was time for the Lord to move on on his travels. But the Korma Brahmana was feeling so devastated that the Lord was going that he actually made an attempt to follow the Lord. The Lord turned around and then asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm coming with you. He said, how can you do that? You have your family, you have your responsibility. He pretty much rejected that idea. But then the Lord said, actually, the, you can associate with me by, uh, by, by doing the same thing I'm doing. And he said, well, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Wherever you meet, teach them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He said, by my, by my command, be guru, save the land. And he, showed, and he said, if you do that, you will never lose my association. And someday we will meet again. So the Lord was very clear that anyone in any position of life and be an instrument for spreading the glories of the Lord, the process of pure devotional service. And so this is our, our movement. Here we're seeing Narada Muni. He's the traveling spaceman. He's going, he arrives just at the right time to give the messages that is needed, right? When people need to hear right at that same time. He, his service is that he keeps traveling around and uh, performing his service. And he's always chanting the glories of the Lord on his tambura. And he is uh, uh, always looking to go to those places where he can uh, really make a difference in preaching Krishna consciousness. You see, he shows up just at the right time 
He's a transcendental spaceman. He also has great powers. He knows past, present, and future also. He, he's, he has Tri Kala Gyan. And, uh, and he's always welcome wherever he goes. Of course, one time when he went to Dak, uh, to the sons of Daksha, Daksha didn't like the whole idea because Narada Muni converted his sons to become Vaishnavas and give up their practice of household life. And uh, Daksha wasn't in favor of that. But wherever Narada goes, he's, he's welcome. And he always gives the most important and relevant advice to take up Krishna consciousness. And so uh, we see um, this is our movement become Krishna conscious and to give it to others. Lord Chaitanya has defined or described his movement in three phases. The first phase, or, or three three aspects, I'm not sorry, not phase, three aspects. One is to chant the holy names and to develop attachment for chanting. In other words, chant in such a way that one develops a taste for chanting. And that taste is very sweet. Frida describes that as nam ruchi, the sweet taste of chanting the holy name. The second is uh, to serve, to associate with and serve Vaishnava. And to serve Vaishnava is the highest form of service in the sense that it, it directly pleases the Supreme Lord. As Krishna says, one who says he's my devotee, is not my devotee or one who says he's the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee this quote comes from the adi purana uh, verse number one in the in the adi purana describing how dear the devotees are to krishna and one who serves and pleases the devotees pleases krishna very much which is ultimately the goal of bhakti is to please krishna and the last is called Jiva Doya. Jiva refers to the living entity's position as uh, infinitesimal. We are called Jiva souls. Jiva means tiny, small, fragmental. And uh, Doya means compassion, to show compassion for the fallen condition souls and giving them a chance to come to Krishna. There are whole society centers around doing programs, going everywhere to reach the conditioned souls. Not just preaching to the devotees, but preaching to everyone and anyone. The purpose of our program here every day is to give class and discuss and learn more about the, the process of Krishna consciousness. But another purpose of this daily class is to inspire devotees to take up the preaching mantle and start to do that preaching himself. Just like one week ago, we gave a class on how to give a class. Um, it was well received and I got some, some nice feedback. But now the next step is to actually do it, is to start preaching Krishna consciousness. And as soon as you do, you, your retention of the philosophy quadruples. Mm -hmm. Just like it says that uh, this is a general statistic that was taken. Yeah. It says that generally people re remember 5% of what they of what they read. They remember 10% of what they hear. They remember 20% of what they see. They remember 50% of what they see and hear together. When you combine the audio and the visual together, the retention level comes to 50%. They remember, people remember 70% of what they do, and they remember 90% of what they teach. So here's a way for one's own personal benefit to, to know more and more this philosophy and the process is to preach it. 
Because when you preach it, you're actually also preaching to yourself. And then you start becoming more aware on how to follow the process and how to learn that knowledge and, and apply it in Krishna consciousness. So although the conditioned souls are somewhat stuck in their materialistic life, and we might find it hard to reach them still, the effort alone brings about great benefit. And when one person becomes a devotee by our efforts, it is the greatest form of success and happiness. And of course, that's celebrated not only by the devotee, but by Krishna himself. So we see, uh, we can learn from Narada. He travels everywhere, reaching the glories of the Lord, plays on his vena, and it says that the holy name comes out of his, the sound of his vena, and uh, he's welcome everywhere, wherever he goes, because he always helps to inspire people in the process of bhakti. And you'll see, he's now arriving in the in the palace of the Pandavas, the Kurus, both. And now he will explain to the family members what happened to Dhritarashtra. Those of you who are following the theme here, that Dhritarashtra has now left. All of a sudden, he left after hearing the words of Vidura. He left along with his wife and Vidura. They all left to go on pilgrimage and ultimately practice self-realization. Yudhisthira and Sanjaya, both of them were feeling the loss of uh, their grandfather, their uncle. Uh, their Sanjaya can't get over it. And everything that Dhritarashtra did was always with Sanjaya because Dhritarashtra was blind. And Sanjaya took up the, the compassionate service to, to assist Dhritarashtra in everything. Also informing him on everything that he needed to know and wanted to know. But when uh, he came to the palace that day, you know, he couldn't find Dhritarashtra. And then he learned he had already left, and that was like a thunderbolt to the heart of Sanjaya and his expression his uh, sadness. So now both Yudhira, I'm sorry, both uh, Yudhisthira and Sanjaya are both uh, bewildered and lamenting the loss of Yudhira and Sambari and Yudhira. Now Nara will give the pacification medicine <laughs> and explain everything to them. And that's why he's come, just to help them understand what has happened and why it is actually beneficial. Okay, so we'll stop there. Any questions or comments? Hare Krishna, dear devotees, <clears throat> please uh, now, um, if you can do it, then uh, share your screen also, uh, and uh, and please share your comments and uh, and uh, realizations and questions. Thank you very much. Yes, Sri Devi Mataji. Thank you, Radhari Yamini. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. Maharaj, this uh, point of preaching, when you said that uh, we may not feel so qualified, but still we must uh, try to preach, then will there be some occasion when we are overreaching or going above and beyond our position uh, and that that is not appropriate? Well, I said you should preach to the level of your realization and understanding and then that will have the most effect. But if you're repeating 
previous acharyas, then that you can also do, but within range. So you listen to your spiritual master, you listen to Shiva Prabhupada, you hear their lectures, you read the books, you get an idea. And then when the opportunity comes, then you might have to apply some of the words that they say in order to uh, make a, to affect the person you're preaching to. Hmm. But we shouldn't try to preach about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Let's not require, keep it simple, keep it basic and uh, you know the Shastras, and it's good to know the Shastras, you can offer reference to everything you say also. And that will be, you know, very pleasing. Thank you, Guru Continue. Uh, dear devotees, uh, do you have any further realizations or, or comments, questions? Uh, okay, while, uh, while someone uh, comes up with a question or realization, I would also like to ask something, <clears throat> because Guru Maharaj, you mentioned that uh, um, when when devotees experience some kind of uh, difficulty while preaching the glories of the Lord, uh, they are so happy that they don't experience uh, um, they don't uh, experience it as a suffering. And I was wondering uh, what is the actual difference between pain and difficulties and suffering. Um. Suffering is really comes by way of something in your life that you are attached to and it's no longer there or something changes in on a personal level. For a devotee, although they may undergo difficulties, challenges, obstacles, it's not a cause of suffering. Suffering comes by way of attachment. When is when you're attached to something, then you suffer. So, does it mean that it's actually the interpretation of the mind and not the actual circumstances? No, uh, well, there are different levels of uh, difficulties that may appear, but generally, it's 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 the uh, it's the feature of the mind. So devotees might experience difficulties and inconveniences, but it's not a cause of suffering. It's just the way it is. You know? We accept it in that way. That's if you're in the right consciousness. Suffering means attachment, really. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank when you. You're attached to something, and then you don't, you're not able to fulfill it attachment or something that you have in life is no longer there that's that may be causes of suffering mm -hmm. yeah. thank you it's it's clear now mm -hmm. Srimati Mataji Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisance as Allah's prophet um, Guru Maharaj um, Thank you for the class. Uh, my connection was not good. I couldn't hear much of the part. But um, um, as I have a question in preaching, uh, like you, you said in your previous classes that uh, um, we have to preach to the newcomers and uh, with our same level, we have to be like friends. Um, so can you just a little bit elaborate on being, being a friend to our peers and uh, not able to, uh, not showing that, 
uh, we are doing something and they are, if they are not doing we are not boosting ourselves uh, like that um, so there i i believe that there is a thin line uh, between preaching and being friends so can you please elaborate on that particular part Maharaj? Oh, we're representing Krishna. And Krishna says, Suhidam Sarva Dehinam. Or Suhidam Sarva Bhutanam. In two places, he says, well, I am the friends of all living entities. So as we're representing both the spiritual master and Krishna, we're acting as the, the friend of that, that living entity. Because a friend means one who is actually... Um, acting for your own best interest. It's not their interest they're acting for us, but it's for your interest. So we're, we're representing Krishna, who is called Suhit. Suhit means he's the best, he's the friend of all of the entities. But in the same way, we can also be friendly in the sense that we don't present ourselves as being, you know, like above people, but we speak to them in a very, uh, in a way that they can understand. In other words, not to talk down to people, but to talk with them. That's more of a friendly thing. Talking down means to, to acting in a role of superiority and, uh, and, and wanting them to accept that role. But then again, if you want to get a little bit more in that same area, that means it's like the bodies are friendly. <laughs> and some, when we preach to others, we, we maintain that friendship, that, that, that friendly mood. Yes, good match. Yeah. Got it, Gurmaraj. But, um, but Gurmaraj, can we, um, sometimes we don't know like what other devotees are doing, any services, what type of services they are doing, we don't know. And um, yeah, is it okay if we ask them like uh, um, what kind of services are you involved in to get inspiration or to get know more things about them or what going on in the temple? Um, is this yeah. a good um, thing? Why not? The more okay. you can learn. If you do, you know, just you know, you can be friendly when you want. Okay. So it's very hard to preach to people in this age, and mm -hmm. depends even in this in this world the way we are here. It depends if you're preaching from the pulpit, in other words, from the diocesan, the then that's one thing. You're quoting shastras. You're referring to. Uh, the statements given by the previous acharyas, you're giving your own levels of realization on the philosophy and on, and on the subject matter. So that's one way. But if you're speaking one on one, it's a little different. The mood. Yeah. Yeah. It's good much. I'm not qualified to go on to the Vyasasan yet, but. Uh... Uh, it's like a friendship, um, friendly um, exchanges between the devotees. That's all. Um, yeah, but you shouldn't let that that friendship interfere with the way you're presenting your. Yeah, sometimes you have to say things that are hard for people to understand, mm. or even to accept. Mm. But if you do it in a in a in a very pleasing way. Sachim priyam, sachim bruyam. Speak truth in a pleasing way. Mm. And Prabhupada, you know, he's saying that people are who are not Krishna conscious, they're not in a sound state of mind. <laughs> so you're basically telling people they're crazy or they're insane. But he's using these words, sound state of mind. Instead of saying that they're crazy. Which yes, is that, that word crazy also applies too. Because crazy means you don't know who you are. If I ask you who you are and you tell me something, somebody, if you tell me you're, you're, you're God or you're Napoleon, then I know you're crazy. But 
if I if you say if you identify yourself with the, the body you have, that's another form of, of uh, unsound mental condition. Because we're not. We're not the body. Nor anything related to the body. A real identity is Jiva Surupai Krishna and Mr. Das. That's who we actually are. Well, when you talk in ordinary parlance, you speak about your material yeah. definitions of many languages for the sake of, you know, for the sake of conversation. But in the back of your mind, you know that you're not, not any of these things. Mm -hmm. Yes, good news. Yeah. Thank you so much. How's the, weather? How's the weather in New Ah, It's very nice, Gunmaj. It's early morning now. It's 75 degrees. Um, it's a little chilly. I think it rained uh, last night. Um, yeah, um, we, we came late. Uh, we came uh, in the dark last night, so we couldn't explore much. But uh, now we'll start exploring New Talavan. You can talk to Sri Devi. She used to live there. I'll tell you where to go. Okay, continue with the discussion. Thank you, Shri Mati Mataji. Uh, there is a message from uh, Sona. Uh, he says that uh, Haribo Maharaj, my humble obeisances, thank you for clarifying. I used to think, I used to think the preacher should be at the level of Madhyam Adhikari and should be able to give bhakti Agyatsukriti from one's heart. Your class has cleared this doubt and that uh, we can preach at our level of God realization. Oh, you can always tell everybody. A preacher is actually on the level of Madhyamani Kari. That's one who takes up the service of preaching. But it doesn't mean you can't speak Krishna consciousness to others if you don't, if you don't make that your main service. That's what Lord Chaitanya was telling the, the Korma Brahmana, that you're a householder. You have responsibilities with family. So whoever you meet, I'm about Krishna. Whoever you meet, tell them to chant, teach them to chant Hare Krishna. That doesn't mean you're actually a preacher. It means that you're actually preaching. That's it. There's those who, who, are, who, who are preachers, as a service, and then there's others who preach whenever the opportunity comes up. The preachers have to be on the standard, the level of Madhya Mamai and Kari. That's the only thing. Thank you. Sri Devi Mataji, please unmute yourself. I, I, I'll give you another example of that. Is that Prabhupada would talk about Malati's daughter. Mm -hmm. when, when Malati's daughter would, she would be about five years old and she would walk around during the Sunday feast. And sometimes she would come up to someone and say, Do you know who do you know Krishna? Do you know who Krishna is? And then they would sometimes they would say, No. And she would say, He's the supreme personality of God. And then she would run away. <laughs> As I said, she's speaking the absolute truth. Yeah. So there's preaching and then there's preachers. You know, you have to see the, see the distinction between the two. Thank you. Uh, Shri Devi Mataji. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, as we speak to non-devotees who are not so familiar with the philosophy or understand the knowledge, we may speak something uh, because we are confident of the Shastra. We may even quote the Shastra 
or we may speak with great conviction. And that might come across as uh, very intimidating or talking down to them when all we are doing is just quoting from the Shastra or speaking out of conviction. So is this something that we should deliberately tone down or be careful not to intimidate them by quoting Shastra? You have to, you have to know who you, the audience. You don't know who you're preaching to or a little bit about the person. But yeah, we should, we should try to reach them according to how best they can be reached. You have to know a little bit about who you're talking to. And sometimes we go a little bit beyond. When we give a class, that's one thing. But when you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, it's a different, completely different thing. You should be very careful and understanding of how to speak to the person you're speaking to. You may want to avoid saying certain things because you know they won't, they won't be acceptable. But when you're on the pulpit, when you're on the Vyasasan, and you speak, just as your spiritual master teaches you, just as Srila Prabhupada's words are there, you can, you can quote those. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Know your audience. Thank you for your question, uh, Shredem Mataji. Uh, Skylak Mataji, please uh, unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, and thank you for today's class. Um, if I feel pain uh, because of something, uh, because of my joint, we say, because of my joint, uh, and I feel the pain, does this mean, do this means that I'm not uh, well uh, Krishna conscious, or it means that it's just a pain I feel, but anyway, I have to ignore it. In that case, how can I ignore the pain and just think, this is not me, this is not my, this is not me, this is not my body. Can I get, please help me? You're, you're talking about physical pain? Yes. Yeah. Well, you just have to tolerate it and realize it's it's not happening to you, it's happening to your body, but because you're in the body, still you, it causes you some discomfort. So that's a reality. <laughs> but when, because we don't live for the body, we tolerate these things. Because the non-devotees live for the body, their reverses in life and the pains they experience become overwhelming sometimes. Because they live for a different reason than we do. We live to serve the Lord. They live to enjoy the material world. So we can just tolerate the inconveniences and go on with our devotional service. Uh, Scarlett Mataji, you are uh, muted. We cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. May I please ask another question? About the uh, preaching. Well, we know Dini, she's asking. Oh, <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, please ask your question. Thank you. Uh, preaching, uh, I, I try to, anybody who I uh, uh, distribute book to, 
I try to only say, this is what I have learned. This is what I have got from the uh, from the book. And it, I got many, many answer. And I know that it, you will get many answer also. So this is I, I do and I give. Is that calling uh, preaching? Well, if you're trying to tell somebody something and you're not, and you're a little uncertain about what you're saying, it's not going to have an effect. You have to be speak only what you actually understand and what you understand to be correct. You can't give some uncertainty and expect people to accept it. Uncertainty will just give them uncertainty. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not that I say I'm not sure or so. I said many of my questions I have got answer in these books from these books. They are yeah. very, very good. That's this nice. I say. That's nice. And even to my children, also I ask them, please read it because I know that there will there will be many, many questions answer. So yeah. this is how I say. Is that yeah. calling preaching? No. Yeah. Okay. You're saying this is my experience from practicing the philosophy. So you could also have a similar experience. But is called is that called preaching? Yeah, the preaching is a general term. No. Okay. Preaching means to change the heart of someone towards Krishna. That's what it means. To bring one closer to Krishna. If you want to know the actual definition of preaching. So sometimes we say re reaching out to help someone. Sometimes we say teaching something. But the general term is preaching. That's a general term. Thank you. Okay, we have about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. Dear devotees, do you have any more questions or realizations which uh, you would like to share with, with uh, all the devotees? While we are waiting, if maybe someone has uh, some more questions, I, I would like to ask uh, Guru Maharaj that uh, you mentioned uh, previously that we should, uh, we should know our audience while we are preaching. And uh, for me, it was many times a difficulty. For example, when I, I give uh, online class that there are so many names which I, I cannot connect with uh, with anyone. I don't know whom I, I speak to. So what should I do in these situations? Well, if you're giving online classes, it's a, it's, it's a general thing. You just, you just, you, Preach according to your level of realization. If you have a particular verse, preach about and speak about that verse that you're speaking on. Mm -hmm. Just like today, I just spoke on the verse, that's all. Yes, it's just my, my difficulty is that uh, about the verse, I uh, it's possible to speak on different levels. So sometimes... Uh, such deep topics may come up which uh, might not be so so no. suitable yeah, just, just do your best that's all <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe, maybe i complicate things a bit too much well if you want perfection at the beginning you might find it not possible so as you preach you're also learning and learning how to present the material how what to avoid Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a learning process. Not that you have to be, you know, uh, up to the standard on when the first, when you begin preaching. You just you're learning also. You practice. Yes, it's it's also very interesting. Uh, may I share one of my experiences in this this regard? Yeah. Uh, I I'm I remember. Listening. I'm going away from the camera, but I'm listening. OK. So um, I, I just had one experience that uh, if we also have some endeavor, uh, then the, the Lord 
reciprocates because uh, once I had to give give a class in 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 the tem temple in um, it was a morning class and in the beginning of the class <clears throat> one of the matajis came to me that uh, there is uh, one guest she's here for the first time and if I could speak according to uh, to that and uh, for me it's a bit difficult because um, I, I used to prepare for the class and uh, I, I was just was, wasn't sure if uh, if it's uh, suitable for her or not but uh, during the class it's it's difficult to, to me for to re-evaluate re if uh, if those are suitable but somehow I, I spoke about what I, I prepared and it was about Kirtan and uh, and in the end the the Mataji and the guest uh, they came to me together and uh, I just found out that uh, even if I I I, I tried to, to speak accordingly, but uh, also the, the Lord helped out because uh, this, uh, this lady who came, uh, she was actually familiar with Kirtan. So, so even though she came for the first time, but uh, it was very relevant for her uh, what was said there. So somehow I, I did my endeavors, but Krishna also helped out uh, for, for the remaining things. Yeah, you're trying. Krishna will give you the intelligence. Yeah, success. So, uh, dear devotees, uh, does anyone have any last yeah. minute questions? Yeah, we shouldn't be afraid of not coming up to the standard or defining a, a sense of failure. We should be, we should be more fearful of not trying. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really true. It's but just uh, some somehow because of the forced ego, it it can be difficult <laughs> sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, don't don't be afraid of disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the. Encouragement. Difficulties are opportunities. Yeah, it's it's really nice to think about uh, this like that. Yeah. Huh. Good. Okay, so we're right at the two o'clock mark. Uh, that's my time anyway. We uh, have to end right here. I can only go up to the hour today because. Of other responsibilities here. So thank you very much for coming on. And uh, I think Sri Mati has, has arranged uh, speakers for the next two days. I'll be back on Tuesday. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much for the lecture. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for the today. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Kirti Kirti, I met your son. Yeah, the other day, Trevor, he came up to me. We start talking. Tirta uh, Kirti Mataji, we cannot hear you. You are muted now. Uh, yeah, no. Nope. Anyhow, I will write to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj.